Former Vancouver Canuck and TSN hockey analyst Frank Corrado likes to say that Canucks Twitter is undefeated, but perhaps we need to expand beyond just the Twitter platform, Frankie. Listen, I got all the time in the world for Canucks Twitter, Canucks fans. What I don't have time for is in a very professional setting like LinkedIn. I don't need a message on LinkedIn where you come at me all pissed off that I said that the Canucks couldn't handle the physical uh, Winnipeg Jets on a Saturday night. And they, you like, if you saw my hit with Jay on right the next day, I, I said that I felt like Vancouver got running around in that game and that opened up some ice for Winnipeg and they were too focused on winning the physical battle instead of winning the game. And I've never seen this before. But I got a message on LinkedIn. First of all, I accepted the guy because oh. I accept everyone on LinkedIn. I just assume, you know, let connect. They want to make right? a deal. They want to make right. a deal. And yeah. These seconds, are professional people. After, I see my phone pop up and it's some dummy all pissed off saying that I'm biased. I played for the Canucks, but I'm biased towards the Jets. Right. Get out of here on LinkedIn. Get a life, LinkedIn. You're biased against the team that you played for, but not. Yeah, I'm not following. Okay. LinkedIn, well, and, and, okay. If this is my Instagram picture, okay, with the two gone, my LinkedIn picture's got to be like, you know, very prim and proper, suit and tie. Like, yes, yeah. Ridiculous. ridiculous. Time and place. Time and place. And well, not to mention what your take was is pretty much the take of everybody after that game. As Juleson chases the hit, allows the, like, I mean, everybody was, everybody was saying that. So, yeah. No, but. <laughs> What I'm thinking about with this is homeboy was probably, you know what? I'm going to go after them on LinkedIn. Yeah. Everybody goes after them on Twitter. I'm going to go sneak and attack. put out these. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's a sneak attack. Yeah. It's a Trojan horse. Yeah. Here you, know they what, come. you know what LinkedIn is filled with? You know what LinkedIn is filled with? People saying, hey, so-and-so would love to see if there's some synergy be with, between our two brands. Why don't we hop on a call? And mixed into that was, I can't believe how biased you are. Yeah. Uh, take a hike. Now, would Let's you like to invest energy. in my Bitcoin company? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Congratulations man. on your work <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Congrats on the new role. Oh, it's so God. fake. Like, people do not talk like that in real life. No kidding. Okay. Have I got a deal for you, though, Frank Corrado? Um, What'd you make of the bounce back after a game that can oh. not really be described versus the Minnesota Wild? Did you, do you believe in moral victories for a first place Why team? Why are you doing this? As they go toe -to -toe You're just baiting with me. You're the just ass. waving the red meat in uh, front of my face. What did you Listen, think of the effort? Um, moral victories. Okay. Like, you know, it's great to have uh, bounce back performances and, you know, it's it's such a delicate thing I find in a regular season where a team can go on a slide. You don't you don't bounce back from it for a long time. So at least you do it sooner rather than later. But that was that was crazy. Like for lack of a better term, no pun intended. That was wild. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I don't know how to describe what we what we saw in that game. It was truly one of the most bizarre displays of hockey. But listen, it's a long year. OK, it's 82 games. There's ups and downs. There's days you go to the rink, you feel like crap. Uh, there's days you go to the rink and, you know, you just don't have it. So, yes, there is something to be said internally within the group where it's like we kind of know leaving the rink that we, we gave it an honest effort. And that was a good game. And you can like you can justify that kind of stuff like the players, coaches always kind of say that if we're going to lose a game let's lose a game where we actually played pretty well. Like the other team actually beat us and um, that's going to happen. And I, I thought that's what would happen with the Canucks against Colorado. Ale Vino used to always say at the end of a winning streak, you're playing bad and winning. And at the end of a losing streak, you're playing well and losing. Um, I, so tonight, you know, versus the Kraken, I would say, you know, you'd want to see that continuation, though, right? You'd want to see that another good game to lead you to believe that the wins are not too far on the corner if it's not if it's not tonight at all. Yes, exactly. And I, I saw you guys the the poll question today. Like, is it a, a must win? I wouldn't say it's it's a must win, 
But in order for like the group to kind of believe in things here, like which they should, and they they absolutely should, but it's almost like one of those things where within the group, we're not messing around because we've lost some games now in a row. And you, you've made, basically like you've seen what the spiral can be at times, although this year it hasn't really happened. Like let's write the ship. And the best way to do that is, is to get a win. And so while it's not technically a must win, I think there, there's, there's going to be a lot of urgency. Like I, I sense there's going to be a heightened sense of urgency in this game. And um, I would imagine like less mistakes, you know, a little more tighter defensively, a little more onus on, Hey, let's make sure we block that shot. Like all that kind of stuff, because it is good to have little moments in the season where you get tested where you get tested by the schedule or the teams or, or even your coach, like your coach is going to throw that out there and walk in the room and say, guys, this is a very good challenge for us today where we played better. We didn't get the results. Like, let's do it for ourselves here to kind of know that we can turn things around as quick as possible. And that's what I, I would expect from the Canucks. We have to let you in on the joke though. The must win poll question, our old colleague, Dave Pratt, who you were a Canuck when Dave Pratt was mm-hmm. yeah, on I remember the name. Yeah. yeah. So Dave, big daddy, you know, used to break out the must win in late October. Yeah. This you, is tasteful. Usually, this is downright tasteful. Remembrance yeah. day. <laughs> so we're having yeah. some fun with with that today um speaking of fun the dad's trip and we uh we're talking to brenton demko on today's show thatcher's dad did big sal get on a, a dad's trip your father at one point two of them one with the canucks and one with the leafs you guys want to hear a great dad's trip story please, please. oh man this is a doozy <laughs> i gotta set the scene for you so this is in in vancouver we're, we're doing the dad's trip in Chicago and Minnesota. Yeah. And they treat us so well. Like it was, you know, first class experience. All the dads are really enjoying it. Think about all the, the sacrifice these guys, you know, have um, and go through to get get us to, to that level. And so I'm not, I'm hurt at the time. So I'm not playing. So I'm hanging out with the dads up in the booth. And I'm sitting on one of the couches in the suite um, during the game. Cause it's just tight in there. Like there's not enough seats for everyone. So some guys are kind of taking shifts, going to the seats to watching on the, on the TV, whatever. Underneath the TV is all the food stationed. Right. And me and my dad are sitting there. We're watching the TV. There's another father next to us. It's a very prominent figure in the Vancouver Canucks organization. Very, very high up. And he is situated standing where the food is blocking the tv now another father says to that gentleman excuse me can you please get out of the way of trying to watch the game something along those lines I'm not going to tell you whose father it was but i will say that person may have been paying for the whole shindig <laughs> <laughs> and oh, my no. dad and i we laugh like we still laugh about that to this day that like that was the big cheese and he was standing in front of the tv and this other father had no idea oh no no idea he wasn't no just bold idea. he just was no idea like didn't know it like get like out of the way please trying to watch the game and did not realize who he, he was talking to and it was the craziest my dad and I were beside ourselves we, and, and no, like no one really saw it except us. And like mm-hmm. the amount that we laughed the rest of the day, the rest of the trip, we couldn't believe it. We what was the look on the, uh, Thanks, the grieved Frank. face when the request was made? Disbelief? Was a little bit of like, okay. And then just kind of like <laughs> moved out of the way, like very polite, like very, you Didn't know, make very it polite mean. about yeah. it all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who put it this was, thing together? Was, Me. That's who. <laughs> like, it was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll move. But, oh, man, it was, it was something. It was something. Hey, you, you have told us in the past, you go way back with Phil Giuseppe, And I know you're amused watching his dad, Luciano Giuseppe watch the game in the box the other night it was great it was great to see uh they they showed the the, the booth and, and you see luch and so phil and i played minor hockey together 
And Luch got a great mustache. It's original. It's still there. But it didn't matter how bad you played. And, you know, some parents can be really hard on their kids. Or Like, you'd come out from the dressing room carrying your hockey bag. There was Luch. Fist bump. Great game, buddy. Like, the most positive oh, guy nice. ever. Um, yeah, very, very nice. You could have had the worst game. You could have had, like, three giveaways. Fist bump. Pat on the back. It's okay, buddy. It's all good. You know, you, you go – you get – Get back after it next game. Like just, just the nicest gentleman ever. Uh, what'd you make of the, uh, the Baines reaction? Um, our steep makes his debut. Uh, I'm sure you, sure you, it, it gives you the feels to think back to those moments when you see uh, a dad and a, and a son enjoying the, that kind of a night. For sure. And listen, everyone's first NHL game means a lot. I think there was a lot behind his first NHL game just right. because like Different from paths. Surrey undrafted, mm -hmm. like, the, the demographic that he represents. Like, I think there's a lot of power behind that and, and kudos to him, man. Like he, he, he did it. Like he's, he's done it the hard way. He's had to prove himself every step along the way. And he finally gets the opportunity. I thought he looked really good. Like I thought it was, it was a very good showing in a very difficult circumstance. You're playing at altitude in Colorado, which is hard for veterans. Never mind someone playing their first game. Um, thought he, he made some good plays with the puck. Uh, he wasn't afraid to kind of bring the puck into the middle of the ice. Like all the things that, you know, you kind of think make him a good player at the AHL level. He's having so much success there. He basically did at the, you know, in his, in his first game. So um, I, I think that was awesome. And just, you know, to see the reactions from that community um, and just how much, how much it, it means, it was, it, it's very cool. And obviously, you know, with Vancouver, um, you know, there's, there's, there's Surrey, like there's just a big population that he represents. And I think it was, it was so cool that he was able to do it for his hometown team. Pretty, the pretty key, amazing story. The key at the NHL level is consistency, obviously, but it's not like he scored two. If he scored two, or you're, you're not expecting that uh, out of him every single night, you wouldn't expect him to replicate that. But the way he played is kind of what we thought his game is like, maybe that is doable on a more nightly basis for our Steve Baines. Well, I mean, listen, you, you go up to the NHL, you're, you're, you're riding on adrenaline early on. Um, and you know, you're almost, you're not thinking you're naive to things. Like it's just very instinctual. Then it becomes a grind. And, and at some point, like if you stay up long enough, that, that becomes the, the biggest hurdle. You know, we've been talking about Quinton Byfield all week because he scores that great oh, goal yeah. against Columbus and he's having such a big season. And one of the points that I think is worth noting out with Byfield and how he's, he's really arrived this year and it's maybe taken him a little while. There's obviously a few reasons why that's the case. Like you could say the, you know, COVID kind of taken away some of his junior hockey, you know, may have stunt, stunted development. Um, sometimes it just, you know, you have all the skill and you have all the tools. You just can't put it together. Part of the reason that is, is you play junior hockey, you play in the AHL, you basically play on Fridays, Saturdays, you sprinkle in the odd Wednesdays and you get some Sunday games. So as far as managing your season goes, you know that your, you know, your kind of down days are early in the week. You ramp it up, you play your games, you have a day off, you kind of do the same thing. It's a reset and you ramp it up again. And it's that over and over and over again. The NHL does not allow you to do that. You play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday. You know, you're playing. You don't have the time to, to kind of like ease into the week and ramp things up. So, you know, you start playing games here fast and furious and you're like, I have no confidence and I have four games in six days and I'm screwed. And, you know, that's that's the reality. And, you know, for for young players, that's one of the big, biggest hurdles um to to overcome that kind of doesn't really get talked about unless you've really been through that grind and i know myself like i struggled with that and and you know there's there's other players that do but for for a young player you know ohl or whl ahl like it's pretty straightforward you get to the nhl it, it's not it's not that easy you're in uh pittsburgh doing the habs penguins game uh we got into this with saravelli last week and you might have some insight on this as a former Penguin and teammate. Can you ever see a day where Sydney puts on a different sweater? I don't. I don't. I, I think he's so deeply embedded in the the team fabric, the community fabric, um, like to, to the extent that Mario was here. And I mm -hmm. think you look at that kind of mentorship where he comes into the league, lives with Mario. They've obviously remained very close over the years. like. 
I would imagine his legacy is going to follow in, in, in the same footsteps. And I, I can't, I just can't imagine a world where Crosby's not a penguin. It's got a lot of game left. And maybe that's the, the enticing thing where it's like, man, what if he that's could it. go have an opportunity to win, but it's not Ray Bork. It's not a Ginla. Like the, he's, he's won three Stanley cups here. He's, He's done everything he, he possibly can. Those guys were chasing cups. And that's not to say that Sid's not highly competitive because he is, but I just, I just can't having been here and seen it up close and personal. I can't imagine he's not a penguin. And Kyle Dubas spoke to the, the media yesterday. He addressed the media. And basically what he said was team needs to get younger here. And we think that, if we keep players like Sid and Malkin and Latang and Eric Carlson around, we can bring some young players and reinvigorate them and kind of retool mm -hmm. this thing on the fly with some young players. So wow. with that thought process in mind, I don't see how you're moving on from him. You say reinvigorate. I mean, he's 31 goals, 55 points. Well, he more doesn't need to reinvigorate. Playing yeah, more than 20 minutes a night uh, still he, he at don't 36. Yeah, no, yeah. he don't yeah, need he any of that. You want, to, you want to hear something crazy? I was just getting... So these are my sheets I do for, for the games. Okay, so that's my Montreal one. This is my Pittsburgh one. All right, Pittsburgh, 25th in the NHL in goals for, fourth in the NHL in goals against, and they have the fourth best save percentage in the NHL. Defensively, this is a playoff team all Ooh, day long. Hot. Yeah. Yep. All day long. Their power play is terrible. It's 30th. Like, yeah. And their expected goals are top three in the NHL. So expected goals are top three, actual goals 25th. It is insane. Like no one can figure out what is going on here as far as like, I mean, the power play is terrible and that's been a big contributor to it. But even like, here's another one for you. They've allowed three goals or less in 10 of their last 13 games. Like, are you kidding me? And yeah, you know what they are? They're a real five, simple red there's a yeah. real simple red flag for me is always the goal differential. If you've got a good goal differential and you're a you're among all the bad goal differentials, there's something wrong. And they are sixth in the wild card standings, but they have a plus 11 goal differential, which is just fine. The team above them is a minus 32. The teams That's below crazy. them are minus 42, and there's a plus 11 in amongst all those teams. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Delta's Tristan the Jari. Like, they got to study this. this. They should they should mm -hmm. study this team and, and what's gone on here because no one can figure it out. So is your old boss, Kyle Dubas, going to give you the uh, scoop on the Jake Gensel trade? I actually just texted him. I was like, mm -hmm. you got to give me. No, I, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I don't want to get into the insider game. That's that's no. you know, that's heavy lifting. That's hard. You'll have work. people, like, you'll have people sliding you know, in your LinkedIn and. <laughs> yeah, I don't like pestering people either. I like to mm -hmm. leave people be. So I don't like okay. to be a nuisance. Do you have a Yager wig? Did did you wind up getting? A, did, did they have any leftover no. Yager wigs from Yager weekend? No. No, but uh, mm. do you remember there was a game Yager played when he was on Florida, where he played against uh, the Leafs and he had more points himself than our entire combined roster. And I was a part of that game and that graphic, I'll send it to you guys, but that, that yeah. graphic lives on. Excellent. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Frankie got to say great synergy here, buddy. Let's hop on a call yeah. and do it again next week. Let's, let's do All a right. zoom next week and uh, see if we can yeah. put some of these details hit me, together. Hit me up yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. I think we have a lot of connectivity and uh, great synergies. And I, I really um, am excited. Excited about where our brands can go. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, your KPIs flying, are impressive. Real good brands. KPIs. Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> See you guys. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. It, they call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.